Okay, and we're live. Welcome to another live stream. I'm Fabian Holland, and today I want to talk about why record with just one mic for guitar and vocals. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, it's, I'm not too late today. I usually try and get these live streams at nine o'clock. Um, on the dot uh, in Central European time that is of course um, but it doesn't always happen but uh, yeah we're a few minutes late today but I uh, hope everyone's doing well let me know that you can hear me okay that it's loud and clear coming through uh, on the live stream just drop a message in the chat uh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, yeah, so I like, if you don't know me, if you've never heard of me, then hi, my name's Fabian. I am a singer, songwriter, guitarist, and I talk a lot about topics related to being a guitarist and a singer, songwriter. So one of the things is recording. Uh, and I really like to experiment when recording, and I really like to to use just one mic when recording, you know? Um, and I'm kind of gonna go over the reasons why I really like to record with one mic. Uh, I'm gonna talk about this microphone, maybe another microphone, um, and gonna talk about kind of the different microphone options and, and stuff like this. Um, but you know, these live streams are not just about me just just talking for an hour or whatever. Um, you know, I really like to hear your opinion as well about this and just I'm just really interested to to know um, what what other people use, you know, what do you use when you record? Um, do you do you like to record with one mic? Do you like to record with with multiple mics two three even more? Um, let me know. Of course, I use other mics as well. I don't just always use one mic, but I find myself time and time again just always going for just the, the one mic. Um, it's I guess it's partly to do with it's partly to do with I like the sound and I like the the flexibility and the freedom. Um, and I'm going to go over the benefits and the drawbacks and stuff of using one mic. And um, but I it also it's really easy, you know. It's really it's really easy and it's quick, you know. I don't have a lot of the times I'm I'm kind of it's an evening and I don't have massive amounts of time you know so and when I when I have an idea when I want to record something you know I'm a little impatient I'm not like um, I'm not very good at just waiting on it and sitting on it I want to record it straight away um, and that's why I really like I really like using these things these little handy recorders as well, you know, these are really good. Been using this for years, this Zoom H4N Pro. Um, this is really, really good. I've done I've done a few videos on this, um, and I probably will continue to do so uh, on these type. I, I really like portability as well. Um, is is a is a big thing for me as well. But that's another that's another topic. Uh, gonna go to the the chats. Hey, Carlos, how's it going? Good to have you here. Hey, Tom, sounds good, great, all clear, fantastic. Good to have you in the live stream. How's everyone's Saturday doing? I hope it's good. It's been rainy here. Let me know what the weather's like where you are, but it's completely, it's just dull and rainy all day here in Berlin. Um, but apparently tomorrow is going to be nicer, so uh, looking forward to that. I'm going to do a little. I'm just going to do a little song um, to start us off with. Um, this is called "Nobody's Fault But Mine," and this is my version of uh, Blind Willie Johnson's song "Nobody's Fault But Mine." It's a kind of a a traditional gospel, old gospel song. Um, and this is my uh, this is my version of it. Nobody 
Nobody's fault but mine Nobody's fault but mine If I don't read my soul be lost And I have a Bible in my home And I have a Bible in my home If I don't read my soul be lost She taught me how to read. My mother, she taught me how to read. If I don't read, my soul be lost. Nobody's fault but And that was nobody's fault but mine. How's everyone doing? Uh, hope you're good. If you just joined the live stream, we're talking about why record with one mic. Um, and Tom says doing some repair work on one of my uh, what does that say? Acoustics actually. Ah, nice. Nice to have your live stream on while I'm working. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love I love working on, on my guitars. What are you doing on your guitar, just out of interest? Um, to be honest, I try I try not to do too much myself because I know I'll mess it up. Uh, 
um, at least not on my not on my Loudon. You know, I I I, I mess with some with cheap guitars and stuff, but um, you know, and uh, unless it's uh, something something basic, I try not to 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 do do too much. But just out of interest, what's uh, what you're working on? Um, yeah, so this this week it's. I don't know if anybody's on my uh, my mailing list, but if you sign up to my mailing list, then what I try and do is I try and send out an email at the beginning of the week, and I uh, I let people know about this week's live stream topic. Um, and I mean, this week was a bit late. <laughs> I, I sent the email out this morning. Um, but it's something I'm trying to do. So at the beginning of the week, I send out an email and let people know about the topic. And I, I, I sort of give uh, uh, a sort of a rundown about what I'm going to go through. And I do a little video as well um, on my community, on my, my website. Um, and I'll just show you quickly on that. Anybody that's, if you're, in case you're, you're not subscribed to it, it's completely free. Um, and yeah, it's just on my website and you go to community and you, you, I'll give you a little password and basically I've got like music section. These are all kind of sections, uh, songwriting, guitar techniques, uh, gear and live performance recording. Um, and these are sort of, and you can go into these and this was the, uh, this week's or this one, uh, and this one is I basically do this and you get a little video of me talking about this, what I'm going to be talking about in the live stream. Um, you know, so it's I'm trying to kind of link them together, my all my my email list and all my community that I have on my on my website and the live stream. So they kind of working together kind of thing. So that's that's my plan. So if you're not signed up, there's a link in the description down below. Uh, it's completely free, you know, and it's just, it just gets, I'm thinking of ways to, to, for us to get talking and, and kind of getting inspired off each other and uh, just really like to know everyone's kind of opinion and uh, thoughts on, on these topics that I'm talking about, you know. Um, but yeah, Tom says, good song. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a great one. Blind Willie Johnson was a amazing guitarist and singer um tom says cleaning the tuners yeah nice as i broke one some weeks back all right okay also my bridge is slightly tilting forwards oh yeah that doesn't sound good uh interrupting the intonation yeah okay that sounds uh Tilting forwards, that doesn't sound too good. Um, it's your bridge, huh? You're not your saddle, it's like the bridge. Ooh, doesn't sound, uh, doesn't sound too good. But changing the tuners, yeah, that's that sounds more doable. That's a lot easier um, with the bridge and stuff. Um, is it kind of coming off the body? Is that what you mean? I hope not. Um, Oh, the saddle, yeah, the saddle. <laughs> no, the bridge, I would say like, oh no, what's going on there? Um, yeah, no, the saddle, yeah, that's, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, this, this acoustic needs some work, I think. I'm gonna, I need to try and work on it myself, that reminds me. Um, I've got a really nice workbench that you can't see that's just behind this screen. Um, it's just completely a mess. I'm really bad at, at keeping my workbench clean and clear. I see some of these some of these people that have like really nice set up workbenches. Um, mine's a complete mess. I'm really bad at that. I should get I should get it more organized. Uh, it can be really nice. Yeah, I like. I like working on my guitars and doing doing little things like this. It'd be really nice. Cool. So, um, 
what I wanted to start talking about was this one mic setup and just to get people's opinions. So what is this for? Um, so this is this is basically for people that maybe you have just one mic and that's all you have and that's all you have available. So you want to learn more about using just one mic to record vocals and guitar. And this is, I'm talking about recording vocals and guitar at the same time, by the way, not about recording them separately. Um, you can do that, obviously, but um, that just doesn't work for me. You know, that never works for me. I'm just, with my music, it's just, uh, it's a lot better and it's a lot easier and it sounds way more natural for me personally to to perform them both together. And I think it's probably the same with a lot of people, not everyone, you know, of course you can you can do it separately if that's what you want to do, if you like that. Um, I just feel it's it's more of a, a, a personal thing, I guess, you know, and it's um, that's the way I write the songs. That's the way I perform the songs. Um, and, you know, it's it's my vocals on my guitar, a two things that play together as you know as one and it's it just feels really odd and strange to to kind of separate them um but anyway that's that's what we're talking about and but maybe you also have mics other mics like me and uh you just enjoy the minimalist recording and the natural sound you get you know with with one mic like me um this one I'm using here is a ribbon mic. This is a no hype audio uh, ribbon mic, and they are they're put together in Belgium. Uh, they're really affordable ribbons. Um, they're really nice, and I have this other one as well. This is also a no hype audio, which I use sometimes. You might have recognised these on some of my videos that I've done, um, and these ones I really like to use. I just really like the sound of ribbons um but also you know large large diaphragms um large condenser diaphragms are also large diaphragm condensers are also great um and and a good choice you know so i want to talk about the the benefits and Please feel free to to make to to comment on any of these things that I'm saying, uh, and any any benefits you any reasons why you like to use just one mic or any reasons why you like to use two mics or three mics or or do it a different way. You know, um, I'm really really interested in, in how everyone uh, records, whether people are like me or or if you do it differently. So. The benefits are, I feel, it's unintrusive, you know, as because a lot of what I'm doing, it's about the performance, you know, um, and if I'm just using one mic, it's it's way more unintrusive than if you have multiple microphones around you, you know, um, I always feel I move a lot, you know, when I perform, I move a lot. So for me, it's really important to have space. I mean, at the moment, I'm kind of, I've got stuff around me because I need to have access to the to the mouse and to the, to the monitor and everything like this. So I, this wouldn't be my typical setup just right here. It's just because I have, I'm needing to do a live stream and, you know, it's slightly different. But normally I would be further back into the middle of the room and um you know a lot more space so that's a big thing for me personally um and i think probably a lot of people can probably relate to that because you know that's how we we practice that's how we play we don't necessarily play all the time with microphones kind of precariously balanced around us you know um it's a bit unnatural even though i record a lot i record almost every day um you know, I feel, I still feel like I, I want space around me so I can move a bit when I perform. Um, because for me, you know, that the performance, capturing a great performance um, is is almost uh, better than, than getting 
a really good sound, if that makes sense. You know, the performance outweighs outweighs the, the quality of the, the tone and the sound in a way. Um, and I know that's probably strange to hear, but, um, you know, I always, when I'm choosing a take, I always choose the take that is the best performance um, and the most interesting to me and not necessarily the best sounding take, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I know that sounds a bit strange to hear, but that's just how it is for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's unintrusive. It's unintrusive, you know. Um, to me, I feel it's a natural sound. So that's number two, is a natural sound. It has, it's almost a natural way of hearing things. You know, even though we do have, obviously we hear in stereo, we have two ears, but um, it's generally kind of, we hear it from one area. Um, and there's just something about just that one microphone capturing everything that just sounds really natural. Um, so that's 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 kind of that bot bit of the natural sound. Um, but let me know, you know, in the comments below what your thoughts are on this. Maybe you think it's an it's not a natural sound. Um, I also think that ribbon mics also haven't very natural sound to them and a very forgiving sound compared to compared to other mics as well um, so that's that so that's natural sound number two number three um, it's easy it's easy and it's quick especially if you're starting out um, you know if it can be really it can be quite overwhelming if you have multiple microphones and you're trying to capture your your guitar and your vocals, maybe you have two mics or maybe you have three mics, you know, it can, um, it's not that easy to, to, to get uh, a, a nice, well-balanced sound from multiple microphones. There's lots that you have to think about. And especially if you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend using just one mic and, and getting to know that mic really well as well. Um, you know, the more I use my mics, the more I get to know how they react to to my my music. Uh, and that's that's a really nice thing. You know, it's it's almost like an instrument. You get to know you get to more familiar with it. So you know, it's a lot easier to, to get to know one mic than it is if you have two or three or even more, potentially. Um, yeah. Um, it's very quick. Another benefit is it's very quick. Um, you know, as I said, most of the time when I'm recording, it's in the evening and not always, but a lot of the time it's in evening time, you know, um, and I don't have a whole lot of time and I like to be very quick, you know, when I get an idea, I like to be able to just set it up and record. And if I'm just using one mic, it's super easy and quick to do, you know. Um, I don't want to be thinking about multiple microphones necessarily, um, especially if I get inspiration and just want to just record something. Um, so it's quick to set up. Another benefit is there's no phase issues. So if you're using multiple microphones, then you can get some some phase issues where they, they're out of phase with each other. So that's when the they they pick up the sound at, at different um, different times. Uh, I don't want to go in too deep on on phase. That's another whole another thing in itself. But um, you can get you can get this sort of out of phase uh, microphones if you're using multiple microphones. But if you're just using one, then that isn't an issue. Um, so it's a lot easier if you're when you're just starting out. That you don't have to worry about that. Um, another another benefit, and this is my last benefit, 
um, sounds weird to say, is it's it's relatively cheaper, or it will be cheaper than if you get multiple microphones. So if you're thinking about getting a microphone and you're thinking, oh, I need to get a, a vocal microphone, I need to get a microphone for my guitar, maybe even like a, a, a stereo setup for my guitar, and um, maybe you don't have the budget for that, you know, I would focus on getting just a, a as best quality microphone, just one microphone that you can, um, and getting to know that and use that a lot. Um, that I think would be more beneficial. Um, and and yeah, so that's that's kind of my benefits on that. Um, as I say, if you have any thoughts or if you have any ideas or any different ways um, that you do things then please let me know in the in the comments um, and like with everything you know there of course there are drawbacks um, some of the drawbacks is there's no there's no individual control once you've recorded you know because obviously it's just one microphone so you can't you can't mix um, the different levels because it's just one one microphone right um, so that's that is a drawback, um, but I feel like if I if I manage to set it up right, and if I manage to get the 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 level in terms of the position of the microphone right, um, then I shouldn't need to necessarily mess with the the different levels. You know, that's that's my that's that's my theory anyway. Um, yeah, let me go to the some of the, the comments. Uh, Tom says, do you have a type of guitar you prefer to record more than others? If so, why? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I always go for this, the acoustic guitar and my Loudon. And, you know, I really, I don't have that many different steel strings really um it's kind of the loudon i've got another loudon which i don't really use that much it's kind of like my backup um and i got a bunch of other like nylon strings and uh, other strange guitars and resonator and stuff like this but yeah it's definitely the this one here is my go-to pretty much every every day kind of guitar that i always grab you know um, and why it's, it's just, you know, it's just part of me. It's just, I've had it for years and it just feels so natural and, and, and nice to play. Having said that, it is, it is very nice to, it can be very nice to, to play something different now and again, you know, when you have like one main guitar that I always play, um, I'm just so used to the sound. I'm just so used to it that um, I wouldn't say I get bored with it because it's almost impossible to get bored with with Loudons. Um, but you know, it's nice to have something else that sounds different. You know, that's why I got all these very different guitars, resonators, um, you know, nylon strings because they really do sound very very different but i would like to get i would like to get some other different kind of body types you know maybe maybe a martin or two um i do like the sound of martins um that could be nice like a dreadnought maybe you know something like this what is it the d18 you know i mean i know it's not it's not cheap but uh yeah, these have these have a nice sound, but I um, uh, like different styles of guitar bodies. Yeah, um, uh, I think the jumbo, you know, um, but it's hard to because the Loudons are so particular, you know, their sound, even the smaller. Even the smaller bodied Loudons are 
they sound amazing as well. I'm just like, I had uh, I had an F model smaller, but I just couldn't get on with it. It's just something about this this body size and shape that is just really comfortable and nice to play. Um, and I'm just so used to it, you know. I don't think I could. I don't think I could have another guitar as my main guitar unless it was very similar in size and shape, you know. I uh, hope that answers the the question. Um, and a new comment. Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna butcher your name. Um, is it Cam versus Man? Is that right? Cam versus Man. How's it going? Good to have you on the live stream. What's your favorite album recorded on one microphone? Um, that's a good question. That is a very good question. I don't even know if if I know any albums recorded on one microphone. Um, let me know in the comments below if you if you have any albums, if you know of any albums recorded with one mic. I'm trying to think now. Um, uh, Remo says, I think Nick Drake used only one microphone to record his ideas. Greetings from Berlin. Yeah, to, to record, okay, to record his ideas or to for his albums. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I'm sure there are albums out there. Um, to be fair, I think a lot of people, the albums that I listen to, the sort of stuff that I listen to, I think a lot of people use use my multiple microphones, you know, and it, it does make sense. Um, I'm just, for me personally, I'm always going to one microphone or very often I'm going for one microphone um, even though in my past albums I actually I didn't use one microphone just trying to think no uh, almost all my all my other albums the proper albums I'm using two microphones um, you know so this is just this is a recent thing that I'm doing now this one mic thing um, it's not something I've been doing for a while and um, I mean, I've always said, you know, I'm not I don't consider myself a producer as such. Um, I, you know, I I've always gone into recording studios to record uh, previous albums, apart from my 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 last album, which I actually recorded in this room. And we recorded the whole album in one day. But uh, we did use multiple microphones and I got a friend to come in and help me record that. Um, and it was filmed as well to put like added pressure on myself. <laughs> um, but no, we, we did, we used multiple microphones. But um, I'm seriously thinking about my, possibly my next album of just using one microphone. Um, in fact, there's this, uh, I need to mention this, there's this uh, YouTube series, maybe I can get it up somewhere to show everyone. Um, I think it's called, what is it called? One Mic, One Mic series. Uh, I have to find it now, hold on one second. One Mic, uh, One Mic. And it's, it's all recordings with one mic and their performances from various bands. Um, one mic recordings, maybe. It's a whole YouTube channel. Um, yeah, one mic, the minimalist recording series. I'll just show you on my screen here. So this is it. Pretty sure this is it. Um... Yeah, this is it. So they have various sort of different performers. Um, these these two are really good. Um, by this band Worth, really really good. And they're using these these. They're actually stereo these microphones. I can't remember the name of these now, um, but they're like stereo 
microphones. They're huge. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's a really good series. So it's just one mic, the Minimalist Recording Series. I really recommend um, everyone check them out. They've only got like very few subscribers can, you know, like they they should really have more. It's uh, they're really amazing. It's what they're doing with that. Maybe because they don't I don't know if they, they don't post that often. Um, the videos, but the videos they do, they really good quality. And the filming is really good as well because they do um, all the filming is done in one take as well, you know. So there's no cuts with the filming, um, which is it really gives you uh, more kind of that whole one take, one microphone uh, experience, you know. And basically the camera is just kind of moving around um, and it's all in one take. And a lot of these are done in various rooms. Like there's some that are done in like, it looks like a church. Um, and they're using that effect, you know, to, to, to uh, of like the, the church, the natural reverb that you get, you know. So it's really, you've got to think about the room that you're going to be recording in, you know. Um, so it's, yeah, that's, that's really cool. But I, you know, I can't really, I don't, uh, that's the thing is like, a lot of albums, they don't really tell you too much how they're recorded. Um, I'd love to know if anybody knows, if anybody knows how things are recorded. Um, I mean, how albums, if any, anybody knows of any albums that were recorded with one microphone, uh, please let me know, because I would love to know. Anyway, I went on, off on a bit of a tangent there, sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, really check that YouTube channel out if you haven't done already. Uh, but that's interesting about Nick Drake um, to record his ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. But let me know if you know if he's recorded any actual albums with with one microphone as well. Um, but yeah, that's something I would I would love to do one day. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so if you just join us, we're talking about recording with one microphone and I just talked about the benefits of that and some of the, the drawbacks. The drawbacks is that you don't have individual control once you've recorded because obviously it's one microphone. Um, but if I had two microphones, then I, obviously I would get bleed in between with both, but I would have some level of control because I can separately control um, two microphones, but you can't with one. Um, yeah. And it's usually a, a little bit of a compromise between the two, like what I was doing there. I usually step back a little bit. Hold on. Try and get some distance. Because if I, the closer I go, the 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 kind of the further away one thing will be. You know, my vocals. It's slightly towards my vocals. This one, my my mouth. So my voice is going to be louder. If I step back a bit and maybe turn up the volume a little bit on the on the preamp, then it will be a bit more of an equal kind of level. Um, but that's how I hear it anyway. But it's usually a little bit of a compromise between your guitar and your your vocals about which one you want to be slightly louder or slightly clearer. You know, and it's I mean, it's it's definitely not going to you 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 are going to get obviously a, a a clearer sound if you do record them separately or if you have a separate microphone on your guitar, you are going to get 
a clearer sound from your guitar and your vocals you know if you have a dedicated mic to that sound source um but i believe like i said before a lot of it is about the performance and capturing this performance and the fact that just one microphone is so easy um and it's a it's it's a really good way of just capturing a performance because of the how how much space and room you have and how natural um like all the benefits i said you know so i think a lot of the benefits outweigh the the benefits that you're going to get from from multiple microphones not always obviously but in some cases so um another little drawback is you have to you have to learn more about how your microphone reacts a little bit you know because you have to be you definitely have to be more conscious of the setting up process and yeah how how your microphone is going to pick up the sound um if that makes sense so it's it takes a bit more time to kind of learn your microphone you know is what i'm trying to say So the, the microphone types that I I would recommend for for using one microphone is large diaphragm condensers and and ribbon microphones. Um, I don't think I would use a dynamic mic or a small diaphragm condenser, just because small diaphragm condensers generally tend to, to be a more focused picking up sound kind of more focused um with a small diaphragm it's something like this you know km184 by neumann um it's definitely more of a focused sound um so it won't be as good about as as picking up a bigger more things around the microphone if that makes sense um, as a, a ribbon mic or a large diaphragm condenser, um, yeah, and the same with the with the dynamic really. But you know there are some great dynamics out there as well actually. So I can't I can't say for sure you know because I haven't tried all all the dynamics and all the small diaphragm condensers. I'm just um, speaking from my own experience in, in trying some of these microphones that generally i would say the the ribbon mics and the large diaphragm condensers would be a a, a a better setup for for one microphone recording um yeah a few on the chat now i'll just go to the chat um remo is it remo 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 says ear trumpet lads Ear Trumpet Labs builds some fantastic microphones. Yeah, I really like the design of their mics. They look amazing. Um, they're often used to capture both vocals and guitar or other acoustic instruments. They also work work very well in live situations. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people use them in live situations as well, actually. Um, I'd love to get my hands on one, actually. I, uh, I actually built a ribbon mic inspired by one of their microphones um if no one's if no one's seen what they look like i'll just maybe i can bring it up here trumpet labs but they're they're condensers aren't they so they're um do, 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 do. i'll just get up their website and i'll pop it on the screen so they look like this. Look really cool. Um, almost very steampunk looking. Uh, lots of people use them, yeah, for live situations. Sort of having lots of people around one mic kind of thing. Kind of bluegrassy kind of stuff. Really nice. Um, yeah, I really like how they've... The, the kind of the handle or the lower part of the microphones, but... Yeah, I think most of them are condensers. I 
I think all of them are condensers, right? They don't do ribbons. But I did, uh, I, I just get my microphone that I, so I went through a phase of trying to build my own microphone. Um, hold on. My own ribbon mic. Yeah, and it was kind of inspired by their <laughs> so that's it. That's my version of it, you know. Um, it, uh, it actually doesn't work at the moment, but because I need to... There's a sort of... Hold on, I'm all tangled up. One sec. There's kind of... Um, yeah, some things I need to t tweak inside and soldering and stuff like that. But basically, there's the, the ribbon in here and this was made from a um the casing of a pedal so it's just like a pedal casing you're like one of these basically you know um you can just buy these pedal casings and i drilled holes in it and um yeah it's pretty cool and i got this piece of metal bent it got these screws and this is just like a pipe you know plumber's pipe and got some bolts and um, and then you can you know there's the XLR and this actually fits perfectly um, on a mic stand which is pretty cool you know you can just like oh, this is really tight but you can pop that on there it's just not not doing it for me at the moment but yeah it's pretty cool I should uh, I should work on that. I actually did a video uh, a while back with using this. Maybe it was on Instagram. I can't remember now. But yeah, it's not not the best sounding microphone. <laughs> I went through a period of uh, trying to learn how to build ribbon mics. It's really easy actually, um, but lots of things can go wrong. <laughs> It, the concept is very easy, you know, it's very basic, but there's lots and lots of different variables. It's very easy for something for to to sound not right just of, because of some tiny little variable that you didn't realize or think about. Um, anyway, yeah, Ear Trumpet Labs, really cool mics. Love to uh, try them out. Um, Remo says, as for Nick Drake, I believe the official album were the albums were recorded in the recording studio however on youtube there are collections of songs recorded at home with a microphone yeah i wonder if they're like just little i think i've seen some of them just little recordings you know that he did um not necessarily ones that he he released but uh yeah, I think most of the time, you know, if you were to go into a recording studio, nine times out of ten, they would probably do a microphone for your vocals and a separate microphone for your guitar. Um, I'm just, I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to experiment uh, in different ways, you know, and uh, trying to get different sounds and. Uh, you know, part of these live streams are about just expressing that, uh, uh, my uh, telling everyone else what my experiments have been and what I'm doing and why I'm doing them, you know, and hopefully other people can relate as well. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Tom says, could you talk a bit about the mic positions when recording with just one mic? Uh, there's some um, do's and don'ts. Yeah, I was going to go through that. Hold on. Um, absolutely. So after mic types, then I talk about kind of my method and my techniques, I guess. I mean, it's very, I wouldn't call them techniques, but it's very simple, you know. Um, and this is just it, it depends on your mic as well and obviously your mic and your preamp and and how how your mic is reacting to everything but the first thing that I do is the setup 
Number one is the setting up. Number two is record uh, a little bit just to just to test the sound. And number three that I do is I listen back both on headphones and on my monitors. And then number four is I adjust slightly. So I I realize what needs what I want to change and then I adjust that and then I repeat. So I record a little bit, I listen back. And I think that's really important to be able to to try and listen back rather than trying to rather than trying to assess on what you're hearing in the moment when you're playing, you know. Um, because I think there's a lot that's going on when we when we're playing and when we're singing um, in our heads, you know, that we we can't we can't hear it in a way where we can make um, adjustments in a in a kind of what's the word in a in a true way, if that makes sense. Um, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we can make these uh, adjustments. We can listen back. When we listen back on our monitors or our headphones of a recording, then we can make these decisions on what we need to change a lot better because it's, we're, you know, when we're playing and when we're, 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 we're trying to assess what's going on it's just very hard to to do that when you're when you're actually paying in the moment so that's why i record and i listen back if that makes sense hope that makes sense yeah makes sense to me anyway um hold on so um the first thing i do is i as i position the the mic but i i think about i think it's important to know what's around you as well how does your room sound um and experiment with that a little bit you know um my room sounds pretty good you know for for i just set it up in the center um i try not to be near anything that makes any noise at the moment i've got a light this light looks really good it's a really great light but it actually has a fan in it which is really annoying um but apparently I can change that fan to a to one that is a little quieter. I don't know if anyone can hear that that fan, but it's really annoying sometimes. I'll just I'll be quiet and see if you can hear that. You hear that? It's kind of annoying. Um so I definitely wouldn't be in this position if I was recording. Um but yeah, so it's 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 listen to the room, get a good sounding room and a good position in the room. Um, I say try and have rugs, carpets on the floor and stuff like this. Um, and in terms of the position, it it depends on kind of what your what you're after. So I usually try and have my vocals slightly m above my guitar in terms of volume, you know. Um, so that's the position of the, the microphone, you know. So first it's the room, the position of the microphone in the room, get a good position that way. And then it's the position of the, the microphone itself, how high, where it's going to angle, you know, because um, there's so much we can experiment with. You can, you know, I can kind of angle this mic. And if I angle it slightly towards my, well, that's quite a lot, but <laughs> slightly towards my vocals, you know, it's going to get more of my vocals. Where if I angle it down, it's going to get more of my guitar. You know, there's things that we can do with that. So that's the second sort of thing is the position and the angle of the mic itself. Um, and I'd say just experiment with that because each mic is going to sound very different depending on your the, the polar pattern and the polar pattern as well is it's quite important because ribbon mics have a figure of eight polar pattern you know so it's going to pick up like everything here in front of it but also pick up everything behind it as well and that's why you can hear the the fan because it's directly behind the mic um so you can you can hear that uh so it's so just be aware of that as well what's the polar pattern and where, what's it going to pick up in the room and that's when that's you should think about that when you're when you're thinking about the room 
um, and the position of the mic in the room. But then it's, yeah, it's the position of the microphone itself. So I try and have it kind of like this a little bit, you know, um, not not too high, not directly on my my mouth, but just almost like almost at my chin level, you know, um, but I definitely would step back a little bit, you know, and then and and maybe bring the gain up a little bit as well. Um, how far am I now? Look, I got a handy little draw here with a ruler in. Can um, so this is thirty centimeter ruler. So I'm, I would be like, I don't know what that is like. Maybe that's fifty centimeters, something like this away, roughly, give or take, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, and this would be a, a, a typical kind of position for me, um, like this. You know. So it's picking up my guitar quite well and my vocals as well. Maybe I go a little bit a little bit closer or bring the volume up a little bit more. Um, and then the third thing, so that's that's the number two. So the number one was the the room, the position of the room. Number two was the position of the mic in terms of how high, what angle you're gonna place it at you know um, and the third thing is your position so where are you gonna be I try and have it like aimed at like where the neck meets the body kind of thing you know this is a good this is a good area you know kind of in the middle of the guitar um, not too much towards this area because then it's gonna be kind of low end heavy and not too much towards the neck because then it's going to be not going to sound as full um, and I'll experiment around you know um, with this and another thing I should say is I'm using I always use a footstool and I I use this because one because I, I always use a footstool because I I kind of like my guitar quite high um, and I feel like it. I have more control this way. Um, and when recording, it's really handy because it's it's closer to the mic. You know, the the higher up you get the guitar, the closer to your vocals. The the you know the the more it's it's going to pick up on the mic. So that's another little tip. And then it's it's kind of basically just also the angle of of you as well. So it's not only the angle of the mic, but it's angle of me. I might decide to kind of go at not sing directly straight onto it, but have some kind of angle potentially. Most of the time, I would I would sing straight onto it though, um, but it depends on on the mic and your mic and what you're using and stuff like this you know so this would be my my typical kind of setup to start off with you know and then I would record like I said before I would record I would listen back and then I would make adjustments adjustments depending on on what I'm hearing you know um, whether I feel like I need to move it further down up I would experiment, you know. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of what what I would do. Um, does that answer some of the some of your questions there? Um, in terms of some of the do's and don'ts, um, I mean, I would say. Try to record at a decent level, you know. I try to to hit somewhere between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. 
somewhere around there. I try not to, to clip too much above minus six, just to give myself lots of headroom. Um, you know, um, that's also another good reason to, to kind of wear headphones, because then you know if it's getting too loud or not during a performance. Um, yeah, but you know, I, I I kind of feel like there's there's not not really too many rules with this, you know. Um, it's whatever you think sounds good, you know. Um, these are just some kind of basic kind of my my kind of uh, rules, I guess, of setting up or the way I do things. Um, but then I might change it, you know, and it might, depending on what kind of sound I'm, I'm, I'm after, you know, does that, does that make sense? Does that help? But, um, I'm not sure if there's any really strong kind of don'ts with any of this, you know. Um, as long as you're you're getting good level and you're getting a sound that you like, you know, can't really go too wrong. And with all of this, it's it's just capturing a performance, you know. I always try and say like the, the performance is is comes first um, and the recording is second. It's like if I can just capture a really good performance and also it sounds good, you know, that's a that's a win-win. That's a great that's a great thing, you know. Um, and that's why I feel a lot of the time when I'm recording in a recording studio, I'm not the most relaxed. I'm not I'm not completely comfortable, you know, because I'm kind of aware of I have limited time here. I can't mess this up. <laughs> this is costing me money, you know, and all these sort of thoughts enter your head a little bit. Um, and, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a lot more relaxing recording at home. I mean, having said that, I did record, try and record a whole album in one day and film it as well. So that was wasn't the most relaxing thing in the world, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so then, and then it's basically another, just the last little thing I want to say is um, dynamics. So another thing that I've kind of picked up on is when I'm recording, if I know, if I know it's going to be a loud song, if I know it's going to, there's going to be some, a loud moment, you know, I might sort of either lean back slightly away from the mic, just ever so slightly. You know, I'm not saying like I would do this or anything like that. Um, just very, very subtle movements, you know, even maybe kind of angling the guitar a little bit like this, you know, these are kind of ways you can almost control the volume of things as you're recording, you know. Um, and that's another reason why it's, it would be good to have headphones on as well, because you could be aware of that. Um, and at the same time, if I have moments where I go really, really quiet in my song and I know, I know I'm going to do that, I just be aware of maybe coming forward slightly and just trying to capture that. Um, I mean, I know I can do that in post, but it's um, it's just kind of nice doing that in the recording. The more I can do in the recording that I don't have to do after, um, I find it's the, the, the better it is in a way, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, let me know if you disagree with any of the what I'm saying, by the way, or if you agree as well, you know. Um, this is all, you know, take everything I say with a pinch of salt. It's all my opinions. Um, 
you know. Uh, but yeah, with uh, dynamics is something I'm really getting into and exploring uh, and using that, you know, almost in a similar way that people would do in a, if they were using a microphone live, you know, um, especially a, like a condenser microphone, you know, like in some of these moments in, like we saw the Ear Trumpet Labs, you know, these guys, the Milk Carton Kids, they're really cool, amazing. Um, you know, these sort of things, you, you would often see see them coming in a bit closer, you know, when one has to sing, one is singing and the other one's just playing guitar or, or one is the main singer and the other one's just backing. Maybe one of them would lean forwards a bit more, you know, you. I'm sure you've you've seen this happen a million times. Um, not a million times, but you know what I mean. It's uh, that kind of similar thing, you know. Um, yeah, hope that makes sense, Tom. <laughs> kind of rambled on a little bit. That's you know that's one of the the things about these live streams. It kind of allows me to ramble a little bit. I hope you don't mind me rambling. Um, as opposed to like a normal YouTube video, you know, it's, um, you have to be like, oh, cut, 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 you know, have it all fast paced for people's retention. But, you know, it's a live stream. People know, yeah, you know, it's a live stream. You can do, do other things whilst you have a listen to the live stream and stuff like that, you know, almost like a podcast. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about if I go off on a tangent a little bit. So I do apologize anyway, if, uh, if I do that, cause I tend to do that a lot. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically my, my thoughts on using one microphone when recording. Um, I'm going to play one more song. And uh, and then leave you guys because uh, I don't want it to get too late. This is um, this is a song called Banks of the D, and this uh, was on my first album ten years ago now, um, and it's it's a song, it's a mining song, an old English mining song. Oh, I am an old 
of apple meat picks I'd raffle them and I'd sell them And I'd hoe them away But I can't get employment for me here It's turned grey Wednesday night to the reckoning I went to the culinary office I went straight for her and I got me wage packet and I was walking my way when they gave us me notice for me here it's to Age 50 and 6 If I could get lots What I raffle me picks I'd raffle them and I'd sell them And I'd haul them away But I can't get employment for me here It's was Banks of the D from my uh, my first album way back in 2013 crazy all right thanks everyone for joining the live stream um, it's been an interesting one so we've been talking about one microphone recording with one microphone um, let me know in the comments if this is something that you do or if this is something that you don't do. If you use two microphones, usually, um, typically when you record. Also, let me know if you know of any recordings that were recorded with using one microphone. Uh, it can be live recordings as well, um, but mainly albums we're talking about. Um, that was one of the questions. Um, I can't really think of anything that comes to mind, but um, if anybody out there that knows of the, uh, of anything like this, then uh, please let us know uh, in the in the comments or the the chat below. Um, yeah, thanks so much for everyone, and uh, don't forget if you haven't signed up to my mailing list and you want to get kind of information about these up and coming live streams and I do exclusive videos and, and kind of stuff like this um, then uh, just sign up on on the link in the description down below so this is one of the things uh, it's a little community on my website it's a really nice little community of, uh, of, of other 
musicians and listeners of my music and you know we talk about these various different topics so I have like my my music page and there's a songwriting um, guitar techniques and gear and live performance and songwriting and these are kind of the main four topics that I talk about um, and recording sorry uh, and this one obviously was the one mic recording and I put everything here uh, I do everything and I talk about these live streams beforehand and I try and uh, yeah get get people talking about these these kind of topics because um, you know it can be a, it can be a lonely it can be a lonely world being a, a solo singer songwriter guitarist um, you know we're just stuck in our our bedrooms or our basements or our studios and experimenting around and uh, it's it's nice to have a community of other people that are doing similar things to me you know and uh, we can share ideas and thoughts and uh, stuff that we've been working with on and, 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 and stuff like this so yeah so if you feel like that's something you would be interested in then just go in the description down below and sign up it's completely free uh, thank you so much uh, thanks everyone for joining the live stream and have a wonderful Saturday evening. Have a great weekend everyone and I'll see you very soon. Bye! <laughs>